Coming up on Moreau News 8, potential terrorism in Russia after a subway explosion. Plus, a fraternity used bubble soccer to raise money for charity. 22, Chris Archer. And baseball season is finally here with a look at opening day. Those stories and more tonight on Murrow News 8. Towards right center, Ellsbury at the track, turning, looking at him. From Studio B on the campus of Washington State University, this is Pullman's only nightly newscast. This is Murrow News 8. Good evening, I'm Holly Moore. And I'm Justin Huynh. Thanks for joining us tonight. At least 11 people are dead and multiple people are hospitalized after an explosive device went off today on the subway in St. Petersburg, Russia. Security diffused a second explosive found at another station. Russia's President Vladimir Putin says they're investigating the cause of the explosion and they are not ruling out terrorism. For now, people have laid down flowers to remember the victims. Lakewood police are looking for information about an abandoned three-month-old boy. A woman was walking home from the grocery store around 1.30 Monday morning when she discovered a little boy laying in the grass. Paramedics said the boy is healthy and has no injuries. The police detained and are interviewing those who they believe to be the parents of the baby boy. If you have additional information, Lakewood police are asking that you call at 253-830-5000. The WSU Services and Activities Committee will hold a meeting today to determine how much money they will allocate to various groups and services and activity fees. 17 groups made requests totaling over $10.5 million. The two largest requests come from University Recreation and the Cub, requesting more than $1.5 million each. Car burglaries and property crimes in Pullman continued over the weekend on College Hill. Pullman police responded Sunday morning to reports of four cars on Indiana Street that each had at least one tire slashed. Last week, there were a string of car burglaries in Pullman and Colfax, but officials have no suspects or leads. Anyone with information about these crimes is asked to contact Pullman Police Department. Law enforcement and first responders across the Palouse joined forces over the weekend during an active shooter drill at Genesee School. Murrah News 8 reporter Kyle Simchuk shows us what happened. It's a call first responders hope they never receive. Fortunately, today in Genesee, yeah. this is all just a drill. I literally bought these shorts for this exercise. It's 9 a.m. when authorities are dispatched. The school is under lockdown. Local police arrive within minutes, followed by tactical teams from Lewiston, Moscow, and the Latok County Sheriff's Office. The shooter has barricaded himself in a room. He's contained allowing EMS crews to begin treating victims. The drill wasn't just limited to responders on the ground. Life flight transported the most critically injured to area hospitals. Ambulances took care of the rest. In all, more than 20 agencies from both Idaho and Washington provided support for the drill, sponsored by Idaho's North Central Health Care Coalition and Latah County. It tested the ability of first responders to work together and manage resources in a chaotic environment. Yeah, I think it went really well. Honestly, a lot better than I expected it to leading up to this. Corporal Doug Fairley's team was responsible for taking the shooter into custody. That's our job is to get into buildings, clear them out, make sure there's nobody in there that, that shouldn't be. Police agree that drills like these serve an important purpose. You just train enough so that the real thing kind of feels like training. If you've done it before, then it just kind of becomes ingrained. School officials also benefited from the exercise. We'll go back and look at our policies and procedures, say what went well, where can we improve, what things do we need to take into consideration. So if we ever did have an event at this level, we'd know where to begin. Today's drill was several months in the making. Organizers tell me they started planning back in September, and it was all over within just a few hours. Reporting in Genesee, Kyle Simchuk, Murrow News 8. Cougs, grab your blazers. Tomorrow kicks off Wazoo's Murrow Symposium. The two-day event begins with workshops tomorrow at 9 a.m. and Wednesday opens with a keynote speech from CEO Anna Centrella Thayer at 7.30 a.m. Resume critiques, mock interviews, and headshots will be available Wednesday at the Cub until 4 p.m., along with panel discussions and workshops throughout the day. The Moscow community is down to its last local food bank with the closure of Trinity Food Pantry. Although many people depend on local food banks to provide for their families, federal funding cuts are forcing shelters such as Trinity to close their doors. Roughly 1,200 residents will have to hope there is enough food at the Moscow Food Bank or find another alternative. 
A fraternity trying to raise money for charity held a bubble, bubble soccer event yesterday. Our reporter Tim Carney was there to see if he could ball. Soccer and bumper cars. That seems to have been the inspiration for this game, bubble soccer. The WSU chapter of the fraternity Acacia put on a philanthropy event yesterday. They're raising money for the YMCA of the Palouse by playing bubble games. There was bubble soccer, the main event. And other games, such as zombies, which is like sharks and minnows. Supposed to be a little drier, a little like two percent precipitation, something like that. But we weren't expecting the the hail and the, the rain. It's been it's been a wild day, but it's off and on. It's still fun. It's still light. From your stomach. But it did um, not stop these young men from continuing to try and knock each other's blocks off. They played in the shadow of the Holland Terrell Library at Rogers Practice Field for several hours on Sunday, all for a good cause. Oh. The weather couldn't dampen anyone's spirits or burst their bubbles. From Mara News 8, I'm Tim Carney. We still had some wind this weekend, but the sun was a nice welcoming sign this afternoon of hopefully what's to come later this week. That's right. Up next, Megan Martinez will update us on the weather. Welcome back to Murrow News 8. They say that April showers bring May flowers, but for Pullman, you might need to move that saying up by one month. Pullman just finished up its rainiest March on record. The National Weather Service in Spokane reports that a record 5.14 inches of rain fell in Pullman last month, while Moscow had over 7 inches of rain, which ranks second for March. Well, we saw some sun today, and I'm hoping the rain stays away this week. Me too. Megan, will we continue to see some sunshine throughout the rest of the week? Thanks, Justin. Uh, we should be seeing a little bit of sun, but I'll get to that a little bit later. Today we had nice spring weather with a high of about 47 degrees, but we are cooling off to about 39 degrees, so make sure you're staying warm while you're watching Gonzaga play in the national championship game. If we go ahead and take a look at tomorrow's forecast, in the morning we should be seeing some sun. Um, in the afternoon it will be about a high of 54 degrees and then cooling off with some clouds and 46 degrees. If we jump into our state map, we should see that Spokane is experiencing similar temperatures as us with 52 degrees as a high and cooling off to about 28 degrees. Wenatchee and Yakima in the center of the state are also experiencing high temperatures with the Yakima with a high of 60 degrees. Now if we look into the west side of the state, Seattle and Olympia and Vancouver are all experiencing mid to high 50s and Vancouver and Olympia are seeing a lot of sun. If we go ahead and look at our five-day forecast, uh, we should be seeing 61 degrees on Wednesday. Thursday, Thursday and Friday should be a lot of rain. Saturday is clearing up, but then Sunday we're experiencing those April showers. That's all the weather I have for you today. Coming up after the break, Rose Cabal has the latest sports update. The great outside. My new mom and I have a lot in common. They're so shiny. We both love the outdoors. That's not a flower. And she knows a lot about wildlife. <gasps> a labradoodle. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Mm. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect <laughs> parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back to Murrow News 8. I'm Rose Caballo with your latest sports update. Unless you live under a rock, you know that the Gonzaga Bulldogs men's basketball team is playing right now in the championship game against the University of North Carolina. This is Gonzaga's first ever appearance in the championship and UNC's 11th. Gonzaga University opened the McCarthy Athletic Center to 6,000 fans that are currently cheering the Bulldogs on from afar. 
Tune in tomorrow for our highlights from tonight's game. Closer to home, the Seattle Mariners are opening their season with a four game series at Houston led by Felix Hernandez on the mound. This is Hernandez's ninth consecutive season pitching on opening day. First pitch was at 5.10 p.m. our time and at the time of our taping the Mariners were down 2 nothing at the top of the fifth inning. The Mariners home opener is April 10th against Houston. Fans at Fenway Park had quite the surprise during the Red Sox opening ceremonies this morning. Tom Brady and other Patriots players made an unexpected opening day appearance. Brady brought his game-worn Super Bowl jersey with him and was showing it off when Gronkowski stole the jersey and ran around the field with it. It wouldn't be the first time Tom Brady had his jersey stolen. The Red Sox beat Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh Pirates to capture their first win of the season thanks to rookie Andrew Benintendi's three-run homer that finished off the five-run fifth inning. That's all the sports I have for you today. Don't go away. Coming up, an injured bear cub is making his way to Washington. Stay tuned. When you're out there, there's no telling what you'll find. I see it, I see it! Oh, look at you. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. <laughs> find yours at discovertheforest.org. <sighs> the great outside. My new mom and I have a lot in common. So shiny! We both love the outdoors. That's not a flower. And she knows a lot about wildlife. <gasps> a labradoodle! You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. If you want to be a parent, it doesn't matter how you play or even what you wear. You just need to be there. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. A Salem man who rescued a three-month-old bear cub is facing backlash on social media. Corey Hancock was hiking near the Santiam River when he found a three-month-old bear cub lying on its back. Seemingly lifeless, he scooped up the cub and brought him to a rehab facility, giving the cub mouth to mouth while en route to keep it alive. The cub is headed to a rehab facility in Washington for injured animals. Although Hancock was criticized online for removing a cub from the wild, he says that he would do it again and would bet most people would have done the same. That is all the news we have for you today. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and join us every night at 7 and 10 o'clock.